There's a number attached to your DNA right now, quietly predicting when you'll die. Not with certainty, biology doesn't work that way, but with uncomfortable accuracy. In some studies, it outperforms cholesterol, blood pressure, and even chronic age itself. Scientists call it grim age, which is either the most honest or the most unsettling name I could have given a biomarker. But in 2025, researchers noticed something unexpected. When they examined this number in nearly 5,000 Americans over the age of 50, the people with lowered rim age scores, meaning they appeared biologically younger than expected, shared a subtle trait. They consumed more of a molecule. Most people associate with gym culture and protein shakes, creatine. But what I want to explore today isn't whether you should be taking creatine. That's really not the right question yet. What's more interesting is what this connection might reveal about how our cells keep time and what quietly accelerates or slows that process. Because this is what caught my attention. Creatine is one of the most studied compounds in sports nutrition history. Decades of research, thousands of papers on muscle, cognition, and energy metabolism. But almost no one has looked at it through the lens of aging until now. So I want to unpack what's really happening here. And to do that, we need to understand what grim age really measures because it isn't an abstract wellness score. It's a molecular readout of processes already underway inside your body right now. Your DNA sequence stays largely the same throughout your whole life, but layered on top of that sequence are chemical tags, methyl groups that attach to DNA and influence which genes are active and which remain quiet. Those tags, they change constantly. And as we age, their patterns shift in surprisingly predictable ways. So predictable, in fact, that scientists can analyze a blood sample and estimate biological age within a narrow margin, simply by looking at these methylation patterns. Here's where it becomes meaningful. Some people have methylation patterns that look older than their actual age, while others, they look younger. And when researchers follow these individuals over time, the ones whose DNA appeared older were far more likely to die in the years that followed. Not from a specific cause, but from everything. Heart disease, cancer, infections, neurodegeneration. The pattern wasn't just tracking age, it was actually tracking vulnerability. That's what Grim Age captures. It's a second generation epigenetic clock that integrates age-related methylation changes with markers linked to smoking, inflammation, and plasma proteins known to predict mortality risk. When grim age runs high relative to chronic age, risk is elevated. When it runs low, something protective seems to be happening. And that's where creatine enters the picture. The researchers use data from the HANDS, the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, a large ongoing assessment of US health. Blood samples were collected from older adults between 1999 and 2002. Years later, those samples were analyzed for DNA methylation. They also had detailed dietary recall data, what participants had eaten in the previous 24 hours. Based on food intake, the researchers estimated dietary creatine consumption, mostly from meat and fish, since those are the primary natural sources. Beef contains roughly four grams per kilogram and fish slightly less, with dairy contributing very, very little. Average intake came out to about 0.77 grams per day, but the range was actually pretty wide. Some participants consumed almost none. Others reached two to three grams daily from food alone. And here's the signal that stood out. Higher dietary creatine intake was associated with lower grim age scores. The association remained statistically significant even after adjusting for age, sex, income, education, and other dietary variables like saturated fat, folate, and vitamin D. And every additional gram of creatine consumed per day, grim age dropped by roughly one and one third points, depending on the model. That may sound small, but in the context of biological aging, it isn't. Shifts that size have been linked to meaningful differences in health and disease risk. Now, it's important for me to slow down here. This was a cross-sectional study, a snapshot in time. It shows association, not causation. We don't know whether creatine intake lowered biological age or whether people with healthier lifestyles simply happen to eat more creatine-rich foods. We don't know whether supplementation would produce the same effect as getting it from real food. And 
We don't know what happens over a longer time frame. But keep in mind, this is one study and it needs replication. And I hope they continue. But what makes it worth discussing is that there are plausible biological mechanisms. And this is where things get interesting, especially for a nerd like myself. Why would creatine of all molecules be related to biological aging? Well, let's start with what creatine actually does. Creatine is synthesized from three amino acids, glycine, arginine, and methionine. With our body producing roughly half of what it needs, mainly in our liver and kidneys. The rest typically comes from animal foods in our diet. Then once creatine enters tissue like muscle, heart, and brain, it's phosphorylated into phosphocreatine. That molecule acts as a rapid energy reserve. When cells use ATP, their energy currency, it's broken down into ADP. That's three molecules into two. Mitochondria normally recharge ADP back into ATP, but the process is an instant. That's where phosphocreatine comes in. It provides a shortcut. It donates its phosphate group directly to ADP, generating it back into ATP almost immediately. That's why creatine matters during moments of high demand, sprinting, lifting, or intense mental effort. When mitochondria output itself isn't working as fast as it should. In simple terms, creatine stabilizes cellular energy. And aging at the cellular level is tightly linked to energy stress. As mitochondria become less efficient with age, ATP production declines. Cells experience repeated energy dips. And these dips trigger oxidative stress, inflammation, impaired protein synthesis, and accumulation of damaged cellular components that don't get cleared out efficiently. When creatine smooths out those energy fluctuations, it reduces the frequency and severity of ATP crashes. This theoretically could reduce the buildup of cellular damage over time. But energy buffering isn't the only possible anti-aging pathway. When the body produces creatine through creatine synthesis, this is one of the largest consumers of SAM, the body's primary methyl donor. Every methyl group added DNA originates from SAM, and the body has a limited methylation budget. Estimates suggest creatine synthesis alone accounts for 40 to 70% of total methyl group usage. So when dietary or supplemental creatine is taken in, it reduces the need for internal synthesis, and it may conserve SAM availability. And that could help maintain DNA methylization patterns, the very patterns Grim Age is measuring. This mechanism is still speculative, but biologically, the logic holds true. There's also the downstream effect of muscle. Skeletal muscle isn't passive muscle. It's metabolically active and it communicates with other organs by signaling molecules called myokines. One of those is brain-derived nootropic factor, BDNF, which supports neuronal survival, plasticity, and cognitive resilience. When creatine supports muscle mass and performance through resistance training, it also supports more functional muscle, which means more myokine signaling. In rodent models, creatine administration enhanced memory performance and upregulated CREB, a transcription factor involved in neuroplasticity. Together, this creates the merging between muscle, health, brain, and all those signaling in between through all the systems keeping everything strongly influenced with these mechanisms of aging. But there is one more mechanism worth mentioning. Creatine appears to reduce oxidative stress and dampen inflammatory signaling, not by directly scavenging free radicals like other classic antioxidants, but by stabilizing mitochondrial function. When mitochondria is energy stressed, it leaks electrons. Those electrons react with oxygen to form reactive oxidative species. These damage proteins, lipids, and DNA. So by reducing energy stress, creatine may indirectly reduce ROS production. It also appears to blunt inflammatory responses. Studies in athletes show reduced post-exercise spikes in markers like TNF-alpha and prostaglandin E2. And chronic low-grade inflammation is one of the central drivers of biological aging. So even modest reductions could matter over time. So let's ground this information for a second here. What we have is an association. Higher dietary creatine intake aligns with lower grim age scores. We also have several plausible mechanisms, energy buffering, methyl donor sparing, muscle brain signaling with reduced oxidative stress and 
inflammation. None are definitely proven to slow things down or speed them up in the context of aging, but together they form a biologically sensible picture. So what do we do with all of this? We take a step back and we slow down just a bit. This study looked at dietary creatine, not supplementation. At this point, we don't know if five grams of creatine monohydrate per day produces the same effect. We don't know the dose response curve and we don't know whether creatine itself is casual or simply a marker of broader dietary patterns. We also don't have long-term interventional trials that show creatine expands lifespan or reduces age-related disease in humans. So this isn't a call to action to start megadosing creatine for longevity. No, don't do that. <laughs> what it does is it brings awareness that creatine may be doing more than we originally thought. If you already use it for performance cognition reasons, then this adds context but not urgency. If you don't, the most conservative takeaway is simply ensuring adequate dietary intake, especially as you age. For people who avoid animal products entirely, supplementation may be worth considering with this information. For transparency, I've taken five grams of creatine monohydrate daily for years, primarily for exercise and cognitive support. This research for me doesn't change that decision or the dosage I take. It just reframes how I think about it what creatine might be doing beneath the surface. What stays with me isn't the finding itself, it's what it represents because we've studied creatine for decades through a narrow lens, performance, power, and recovery. And that research has been valuable, but sometimes biology often hides its most interesting effects, especially outside the frame we're looking through. If creatine is influencing DNA methylation patterns, leaving molecular signatures tied to mortality risk, then it's interacting with systems far more fundamental than muscle strength alone. The grim age signal may disappear with further research, or it may turn out to be an early breadcrumb we're finding, pointing towards something deeper about how energy metabolism shapes the pace of aging. Either way, it's worth following. And if you want to explore the studies yourself, they're linked below in the description. Go check them out. This is David. Like always, thanks for watching. I hope this information was valuable and got a lot out of this video here. I'll see you guys in the next one.